When most people sell a house, they tell us all about how much money they made, and that's great. But most of them don't account for or don't tell us about the costs that went into that house over the holding period. And because of that, a lot of us think house ownership is way more profitable than sometimes it really is. So in this video, I interviewed a bunch of homeowners and I'm gonna tell you some of their most expensive costs over the period of owning their home. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Renny. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I make content all about financial literacy on this channel. If you are new here, you may not know, but a lot of people know me as the girl who bought her house at the age of 23. Yep, that's me. And although I am grateful that I did that, I think it was a great decision. I do realize that I have learned a lot through this process and I realized that there are a lot more costs that go into owning a home than I knew of. I recently, or a few months ago, posted on Twitter about my experience and how home ownership isn't the investment that you think it is. And a lot of people were not too happy about that and they were telling me that I am a liar and they were flogging me on Twitter. And I made a video about it and explained in details. So you can watch that video if you want to. But in this video, I decided to go outside of me and go to other homeowners and ask them some of the most expensive costs that they have experienced while they have owned their home. So today we're just gonna go through a rapid fire of me telling you some of the costs people had with their home. Let me know in the comments some of the most expensive costs you've had with your home and also uh, feel free to let me know if any of these shock you because a few of them did shock me. Okay, so let's get into it. And I'll, I'll try to put these on the screen as well so that we can, so you can read along with me. First one, this one's a smaller one. My kitchen didn't have a backsplash, so I paid $950 to get it installed. It was a cost I anticipated when I bought the house though. Okay, that one's good, $950 for a backsplash. Next, my sewage pipe was blocked and backed up into my basement. It was a $10,000 repair. Yikes, that is an expensive cost. And again, it's not something you really factor in when you say, I bought my house for $250,000, I sold it for $500,000, I made $250,000. No, you didn't, because did you take into account the $10,000 that you had to pay out? Did you take into account your mortgage costs every year? Did you take into account the interest that you're paying? There are a lot of things, so these are just some examples. Next. My biggest cost so far in the seven months that I've owned my home is $16,000 on a heat pump and $12,000 to revamp the basement so that I could rent it out. Next, kitchen and bathroom gut job renovation. This is $55,000 that they paid for this. So this one is obviously optional, but they decided to redo their entire kitchen and their entire bathroom, which cost them 55 k That is a lot of money. But again, this one is optional, so I would say this may not apply to everybody. Next one. I spent $65,000 on renovations alone this year, and my tenants are asking for a new AC and water softener that will cost $9,000. <laughs> First of all, I get the new AC, but the water softener, those tenants, honestly, they would have to do it themselves because that, that's a bit ridiculous. Next one. The one that pains me still till date is Six months after moving in, we had to spend $6,000 for a new AC unit. Insurance was only willing to cover $1,000, so $5,000 was out of pocket. And I think this is a good reminder that just because you have home insurance, it doesn't mean they will cover all of the costs. Imagine just having to randomly come up with another $5,000. And a new AC unit is something that you wanna replace ASAP. It's not something, especially in our hot summers, you don't really, you don't really want to be boiling at home. So this is like, I just have $6,000 that I am going to pay suddenly. So that's another thing to consider. Another one. Luckily, it's just been property taxes, which is in itself ridiculous. About $5,500 a year. Whew, that's expensive. My property taxes are only about 2,000 some odd dollars a year, so I'm not even gonna complain about my property taxes. And I know there are good reasons for property taxes, but 
it's annoying when you have to pay it for sure. And most people, when they're factoring in that sale price, they're not seeing all of the things that they have had to pay, including property taxes. Another thing a lot of people forget about is the cost to break your mortgage. So if you sell your home before the mortgage term is up, there usually is a fee to break that mortgage. That's another thing. Also, the realtor fee will cut into the sale price. There are so many things that you need to think about. And remember that your profit is not just solely what you have made when you sell the property. Okay, next one. It's been a mixed bag. I purchased in summer 2021. I had a basement backyard flood within six months. Ouch. $14,000 for basement repair, another $14,000 for backyard, but I haven't done that yet. New windows, $14,000 up front, but I will get $4,000 back from a grant and a new AC a few weeks ago. So that is a lot to deal with in just a year and a half, two years now, um, $14,000 times three minus the 4K. So whatever that calculation is, that is a lot of money. And again, I want everyone to realize, do you just have an extra $14,000 that you can come up with? A lot of people will go into debt in order to finance their house, which is already being financed by a mortgage. And that means that you are house poor. So just, just something to consider. Next one. $3,000 on a new AC unit. I think this has been common, new AC units. So maybe when you are doing, if you're gonna buy a property, make sure you do a inspection and get them to inspect your the AC unit to see how long of a life it may have. Next one, this is good for those who are owners of properties that they are not living in, they have tenants in. This person said, my rental property in Edmonton was vacant for three months. I had to pay the mortgage and the utilities out of pocket. And this is a big reality for people who are renting their property. Sometimes your, more, your property may be vacant. Between the time that I had my tenants leave and got new tenants, the property was vacant for one month. So that means that I had, I think it's one month or two months. I had to pay the mortgage, the utilities, and everything that happened within that month or two. So that's another thing you have to realize. And then you also will have to pay for the realtor to find new tenants if you're gonna use a realtor. There are so many, so many costs associated with this. Oh, and then they also wrote a part two. Monthly payments on the vacant property was around $2,500. Damn. <laughs> so that's $2,500 times three months. That's like $7,500. That's a lot of money. And I'm sure they did not anticipate that. Okay, next. Oh, this one hurts. $12,000 to break a fixed rate at 2.35% mortgage to a variable rate 1.6%, which then ultimately went up to 6.1% in a little over a year. Ouch! Okay, that one, like, the, the rest were bad, but this one is, it has to be the worst. I feel for you. Uh, because yeah, uh, I honestly, if this was me, I would have kept the fixed because that $12,000 penalty to break my fixed rate mortgage would have hurt me so much that I would not have even been able to do it. But I'm sorry. I think you need a hug. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The next one, $25,000 for waterproofing, $500 for duct cleaning, plus other phantom maintenance costs. So imagine $25,000 to waterproof your house. Ah, Jesus. Next. Flooding in basement due to foundational problems twice. Both cost $10,000 and thankfully finally resolved. Insurance covered a huge chunk of it though. Ah, <laughs> so they had to pay $20,000, but thankfully insurance covered a good chunk of it, but still like something was, they had to pay out of pocket for some of it. But foundation issues are no joke at all. Next, $3,000 sump pump, $16,000 reno, the contractor scammed me sending photos of only what looked decent. It turned out all his flooring and carpentry was faulty. It took him four months, so I lost out on $5,000 of rental income. He then told me he was sick and that the job was mostly finished. It wasn't, and I spent another $10,000 to fix it. See, these are the problems, uh, especially when it comes to maintaining your property, then you're trusting other people to do renovations, like contractors, because we think we can trust them, but I have had problems with contractors, and my parents have, and now I'm sure many other people have horror stories with contractors, so. I'm sorry, that hurts. Okay, so the next one. $11,000 renovations on another unit, okay? Two, $1,200 paying cash for keys to an inherited 
tenant who was not paying for four months and was potentially headed to prison. Okay, before I continue, <laughs> before I continue, let's get into that. So essentially in Ontario, when I'm not sure about other provinces, but if you get a property that already has tenants in it, then you have to inherit them in, in most cases, unless you are moving in yourself. So to get this person out, the person didn't pay rent for four months because in Ontario, tenants have the power rather than their landlords having the power and $1,200 you have to usually pay cash for keys so that you can then get them out of your property. So that's crazy. And the person was heading to prison as well. So yeah, be careful if you are getting a property with an inherited tenant, you never know what can happen. They also continue to say cribbing and structural support for sloping floor above the basement, $4,000. And then snow removal, like $3,000 all over the course of four months. Oh my gosh. The fact that this was just over four months is sending me 11,000 plus 1200 plus 4,000 plus 3,000. I don't know how much that is. Seven plus 11, 18. So about 20, almost $20,000, almost $20,000 in four months. And I just beg you all to realize that I am not saying that homeownership is bad i'm just saying that you need to understand the cost that may go into it before you get it a lot of people are paying like five thousand dollars six thousand dollar mortgages and they make like seven thousand dollars every month so they're struggling they're really struggling next I live with my parents and holy the amount of things that ne have needed repair. De-icing roof on de-icing on roof during winter causing leaks was around two thousand to three thousand dollars for us and around ten thousand dollars for the neighbors because their whole top floor was flooded. The laundry machine had issues and it was one thousand dollars to repair. Yo, one thing one thing people don't talk about is the laundry machine issues. Okay, laundry machines when they break down. You have to call someone and they will just do one little tiny thing and they'll charge you $1,000 to fix it. But of course we have to pay them because we can't do it ourselves or we don't know what to do ourselves. So these are the issues. So yeah. Next one was flooring slash ripping up carpet was about $10,000 in total. Furnace heating AC is about $2,000 and the list is endless. So I'm sure there's even more for them. The last one that I'll mention is that this, this person paid around $17,000 for a new roof. Again, I just want you all to know that I am again not saying any of this to discourage you from buying a house. It's just so you have more awareness and are smart before you go into that decision to buy a house to make sure you can truly afford all that comes with home ownership. If you want a part two, I have so many more entries, but I just didn't have time to get through them in this video. But if you want a part two, you can let me know and I will get it done for you. I would love to know which one did you relate to the most? Which one shocked you the most? Were you surprised by any? I'm super curious to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.